you're going, oh, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? If you're doing that, then you should. Do you have an aquaponic system and you've got fish dying and you're going, is it my oxygen? How do I know? And you want to get into a Facebook group and you go, this is what my system is, this is what it looks like. Do you think it's not enough oxygen? Well, I'm going to show you how you can work out if there's enough oxygen in your system. It's really quite simple. So I'm going to show you how it is, how you can actually do a test to find out. And I'm going to link you to the right video to see what type of air pump you need, if you need it. But let's actually talk about what causes there to be low oxygen within your aquaponic system. So let's get in and have a look. When it comes to aquaponics, there's a little known fact about oxygen. Well, there's a couple actually, but the biggest one I want to tell you is that cold water holds lots of oxygen, so lots of dissolved oxygen, because it's actually the water that's... Oxygen is dissolved within the water. And warmer water holds less oxygen. So on a hot day, you're going to have less oxygen available for your fish in your aquaponic system, rather than on a cold day, you're going to have a lot more. So this is relevant depending on your climate. So that's really cool, but it's a good thing to know. For instance, if you have trout, they need a highly oxygenated area. So they need cold water and really good oxygenation. So lots and lots of dissolved oxygen in the system. You want to make sure of that. But if you live in the subtropics like me, at the moment it's 20 degrees, but it's saying it's like 40 degrees because of the humidity, which means my water has less oxygen. I know, weird, huh? But that's just the way nature works. It's an ecosystem. So what do we do? How do we know rather than just going, is it my, is there enough oxygen in the system? I wanted to point out, you can never have too much oxygen in your system, okay? There are two things that you cannot have enough of. Nitrifying bacteria, so our grow bed does that nicely. So enough biological filtration and enough oxygen. They're two things you can never have too much of. So if in doubt, get an air pump check out the link that's hopefully up here now that will actually show you how to choose the right type of air pump because for a small little system like what I've got here that you can't really see I just need a regular aquarium type air pump but for my larger system where the fish tank is a meter deep so you know a meter deep here you need a special type of air pump so I'll walk you through that in that video so do check that one out if you need to, you need to know but then what type of air pump what this, this is an aquarium air pump. So this little air pump would be perfect for here if I decided I needed it. And there's a very good reason for it. This is a small pump. It does not push enough air through the big hose, long distances or down deep. So I would have this on the ground near where it would be going. So it would only be lifting up to about, you know, 50 centimeters high. It has enough oomph so to speak, to be able to push air through at that height. But here's the thing, we often go to an aquarium shop going, I need an air pump for my aquaponic system and they don't know what that is or they don't know how high it is and you can be sold this and it's not going to do the job, it's not going to push the water if you've got a deep fish tank. So if you've had a look at any of the videos of my bigger system, you'll see that I use an aquaculture tank and aquaculture tanks are a metre high. So that's about here. This little air pump does not have enough oomph to be able to push air all the way down that depth. And they do tell you on the box, and if you talk to the people, how much pressure they can do. They can either talk to you in pressure or how deep they can go. They do one or two things in the box. So for, the, for my bigger aquaponic system, I had to go for a bigger air pump. Now, this small one's about 30 bucks. This one was about 130 bucks. Very dusty and I do actually, because it's this is also waterproof, this particular one, I uh, take the top off when I need to check the air filter and clean that out. I have, instead of just one or two air hoses that can go in like the small one, this particular one has four. It also has valves that I can turn on and off if I'm going to adjust things, because if you don't have air hoses on all of them, the air will obviously come out the extra parts. But this particular pump is designed to be able to, one, four air hoses, and two, to be able to push the air, one, across 13, actually 15 metres, and down one metre. So that is why this is especially important for that, my bigger system. Check out the description to find some more information about aquaponics and how you can move forward and get this happening. 
So, if in doubt, you're just going to put an air pump in there, right? But sometimes we just want to know, okay? An oxygen test, an O2 test. Now, this is a really good one. It's similar yet different to all our API dropper test kits, okay? So it's important that you read the instructions. So, our oxygen box, not recommending brands, not unless they sponsor me, not recommending brands. You get two reagents, and they always say bottle one and bottle two on them. Even if they are in different languages, there's always an English version, just saying. We get a really funky, you know, container. Not our five mil, you know, test tube box. Bottles. So, very different. Hole in the top. Take the lid off. See? Hole. Hole. Right there. Very important for how this works. And <laughs> we have our instructions. In our instructions, it actually shows us coloration so we can work out the color. Very much the same as every other, every other test kit. But it really helps you to work it out. So we're going to go through and we're going to do an oxygen test to see how much oxygen is actually in my ooh, little courtyard system, which I haven't tested. So I'm going to go woohoo and find out. We're wanting to, you know, make sure that you always put the cap on, little cap on. Shake, shake, shake. Always make sure that you do. Um, always rinse out your test tube. Or any bottle that you're using with the water that you're going to test. We're going to put the lid aside and what's different for this one is we're going to fill this right up to the top. Okay, We're not going to leave any gaps and we want to do this as quickly as possible because we wanted to test what oxygen is around. So I am filling it up right to the top. Right to the very top. Then, following the instructions, I have bottle number one and it said six drops which I keep forgetting six drops of that one straight away yep boy very hot and humid out here as I said feels like 40 so I'm gonna gently lift this up without spilling it I'm giving that a good shake you didn't see six drops one two three four five six still holding and gently put down don't want that spilling everywhere. I know. Alrighty. Now, before we do anything, we don't put the cap on, we don't shake it, nothing like that. We have our reagent too, giving that a good shake. And from memory, that again is also six drops. But as soon as we put this in, we have to put the cap straight on. So, I can't easily show you, because I can't hold it up that high. Well, I can, but we'll give it a go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put that down. This is going to spill over. Put the little cap fully on, fully in. Push that in. Okay. Now we're going to give that a shake. I used to do these water tests all the time when I did water watch uh, in different states. Different test kits, a bit more expensive, and always super fun. So, we now have a different colour. Alrighty, uh, remove the cover, uh, shake, I forgot, okay. So we don't need to leave this one, oi, super hot. We do not need to leave this for five minutes or three minutes or two minutes, no, you look straight away. Then we match it all up. Eh, I'm gonna go between, okay, I'm gonna say it's the four, so it's the middle one. That's the one I'm going with. So that tells me that I have four megagrams per litre. That's a lot of oxygen. Not too much, but it's a good amount. Sometimes, in really hot weather, I've had it down to two. And I have never had it down to that one. We don't want that one. When it comes to your oxygen, so that's how we do our test, and that's how we know, is there enough oxygen, okay? That's the answer to that question. What? What? Is there enough oxygen? So here's the thing, when we're talking about our aquaponic system, obviously our fish need oxygen to be able to breathe, right? And they're putting carbon dioxide into the water, which is all then getting converted with our nitrification process. All that stuff, which hopefully you know. If not, check out my channel, I've got a whole heap of videos on this. And if you're interested in learning how to build a little courtyard system, or in fact, just some free training on how to work out how aquaponics works, 
check out the description because they do have some free resources down there. Pretty awesome. Right, so we have our fish that need oxygen, but we also have our plants. And during the day, the plants are putting oxygen into the water, yay. But at night, they're taking oxygen out of the water. And on a hot day and a hot night, what's happening? They're going to be taking more and more oxygen because that's what they need. And the fish are using it. And incidentally, so does the bacteria, but the nitrifying bacteria doesn't use quite as much oxygen as everything else. But it's getting used an awful lot. So we're wanting to make sure there is definitely enough. And the bigger your fish, the bigger your fish tank, the bigger your system, and the more plants you have, which I've just got a little tomato here and a transplanted tomato that did not like being transplanted in that weather. The more plants that you have though, the more oxygen is going to get used. So as I said, you can never have too much oxygen, but you can always have not enough. So in hot weather, I always have, have aerators throughout the system. Where you put them will vary based on your system. Incidentally, this is where we also talk about the flood and drain versus your constant flow. Some people worry about if I run a constant flow system and that means that the water is at a constant level in your grow bed, as opposed to the flood and drain, where it floods up, drains out, floods up, drains out. That's going to aerate things a lot more, right? Your constant flow system, though, won't aerate that way. Check out the video that talks about the difference between constant flow and constant flow, <laughs> flood and drain, words, <laughs> words where? Check out that video because I've got a really good demonstration on how that, the difference system works. Now, people worry, I've got a constant flow system, does that mean I'm gonna not have enough oxygen? Well, yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Unless you put in an air pump. <laughs> Simple, put an air pump in. Not that hard. Make sure that you've got water moving, but breaking the surface, that's going to put oxygen into your system anyway, okay? So, you don't get root rot, which is what happens if there's not enough oxygen getting to the roots. So because we wanted to make sure there's lots of oxygen in the system, you're not likely to get root rot unless you don't have oxygen. So let's just bypass the whole concept of that and say, I am going to put an air pump in and make it fine. Or I am going to test to see, once we set it down, you see it all sunk to the bottom now. I'm gonna to test to see what it's like on a really hot day versus a really cold day. And I'm gonna know how much oxygen is in that system at any point in time which is actually what I do do to make sure it works. And I know what everything is happening. Bad time to be doing a video. Constant flow works perfectly. In fact, all of my systems are actually constant flow and I've been doing that for 15 years. I have air pumps in my big one. <laughs> Only my big aquaponic system. I've got six other small aquaponic systems and there is no air pump in there. I do not overstock with plants and I do not overstock with fish. I have a beautiful balance, which is what aquaponics is all about. So if you do that too, if you keep the balance happening, it should be fine within constant flow. Bigger system, in hot weather, pop an air pump in. But as the preventative, test your water with an oxygen kit. You can get them on Amazon, seriously, on eBay, Amazon, all those places, they have them. I've never seen them in aquarium stores, but you can get them. Get it, test the water and see. Before you go and buy anything, Get your preventive test, check it out. Then buy, then buy the air pump. As I said, check out the links for the videos on which air pump to choose, and also check out the links for constant flow versus flood and drain just to see how they work. It's really awesome watching that video. Alrighty, next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm putting videos up every couple of days, so make sure that you hit subscribe so you can get all of them.